Rodewald is live with the story. Matt? Nick and Mimi, when you think of collective bargaining agreements involving schools, you think of teachers and you think of students. But what about the food service workers or even the janitors or maybe even those folks that drive the big yellow school buses behind us? As of right now, they're in the planning and development committee meeting, and that issue is going to come up in just a couple of seconds at this point, and it's going to be tabled. They want another week to take a look at this proposal. Now, this is our first look at one of the suspects that was taken into custody, dragged out of the river and towards uh, Park Ridge Drive in front of this home. Police Police did not find any suspicious package here in the basement at Hope and Anchor Pub. Roads are open, people are back in their homes, and the business is back to normal inside the bar, but it sure made for an interesting Tuesday. In the meantime, temperatures are in the single digits. Wind chills are expected to get to at least 30 below. Is all this worth it? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good morning to you, Candace. Good morning, Evelyn. Yeah, they're used to this sort of thing before, at least the second time in the last three years they've done these sort of celebrations. Tom Guzzi, the head coach of Lutherans, with me for just a second. This is a long day of a lot of fun, isn't it, though? Yeah, this is a day you really look forward to. When you have a week off in the middle of the season, it's very unusual. On the field, Harlem and Belvedere North will face the same challenge of not being challenged on the gridiron. City crews are responding to more than 200,000 customers without power and more than 1,100 tree emergencies like this one here in the Bridgeport neighborhood. So now that we've put the sign together, you got to put the sign up. So I got my hard hat for safety purposes. We're going to go do this. I'm sorry to interrupt your forecast for a second, but I got to explain to you. We got our logos. I got it on my jacket, the mic flag. But the real reason we're interrupting your show is because of this document. We got 71 of those kinds of voicemails, 71. The problem is when you talk like that on a voicemail, it goes to this lovely woman right here. Poor Kathy has to answer every single one of those voicemails. You're going to talk to her like that? I wonder if there's a room where they would just keep all the beer where I could just somehow end up with a beer. There's one. Perfect. Look at this room. We're going to figure out how they make all this beer today. So we got all sorts of cool new things here, but the biggest thing is the Sea Lion Show. We're at Hubbard and Aberdeen here in West Town where they've already started eating without me. What is that? He caught it. That was weird, but it works. Can I interest you in a 70s couch? No, really. It's got a steering wheel, a foot pedal, accelerator, and brake. Check out the emergency brake just in case. Got side view mirrors. Popcorn, anyone? No? This thing can do anything you need here. All I need is a flat screen TV. This might be an antique chest. I really don't know. It doesn't matter. It's just nice. And it's the best way to enjoy the auto show. What you are about to see is a direct look into the violent crime that plagues the city of Rockford. October 21st, 2013. It's 6 19 p.m. This is the west side of Rockford, School Street. They view from a surveillance camera from Lee's Cleaners. A car pulls up from the west entrance, with two men getting out, having tracked another man that had just gone inside a food mart. They wait patiently as he exits the store. The victim is Dewan Walker, a 25-year-old father of two. Having finished his GED, Dewan was working a steady job in Beloit and working on a business degree from Rockford Career College. Walker tries to get into the passenger side of the car being driven by his girlfriend, but in the blink of an eye, he now finds a gun pointed at his head. A split-second decision, a life-changing moment, he decides to fight. Immediate chaos ensues. Then, the first gunshot. Unclear where it struck, both Walker and his attacker fall to the ground. Then, the second gunshot. It's clear it strikes Walker in the leg. The gunman then points the weapon at Walker's girlfriend in the car and fires one more shot. His young son is in the back seat as he ducks for cover. She flees for their lives, pushing another car out of the way just to escape the violent scene. That's when the two gunmen scramble away. Dewan Antonio Walker, father, beloved family member, innocent victim of crime, would die less than an hour later at a nearby hospital. A murder that remains unsolved more than one year after it happened.